To NBC's Chris Jansen went to her alma mater, Otterbein University, this morning to speak with students for our Red, White, and You segment about the allegations against Trump and also Bill Clinton and the kind of the whole tone of this election, right, Chris? Yeah, uh, who says you can't go home again, first of all, Kate? This is the beautiful campus of Otterbein University. And look, we know, we've talked about this over the months. Millennials are key to the Democratic coalition. I talked to the head of the Democratic Party here in Ohio just a couple of hours ago, where this has been a very tight race. And he said, we just have to hold the Obama coalition, which means young students, first time voters, like I talked to this morning, in a class appropriately that they have every four years about the election this year, the election of 2016. And even though it may be their first time going to the polls, they had plenty to say. Take a listen. So this is kind of crazy. Decades ago, I was in this very building taking classes as a student at Otterbein University with a major in journalism and a minor in political science. And now I'm going to go into a classroom and talk to some students today about life and journalism and politics. Let's see how it goes. Hi. 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 I know it's early. We can wake up now. <laughs> So did everybody watch the debates or most of you watch the debates? What did we think? How many of you think that overall the two debates, Hillary Clinton had the better debates? Oh, majority. How many Donald Trump? Zero for Mr. Trump. How many mm, call it a wash? Uh, a couple. Any athletes in the room? Anybody? Oh yeah, we've got some folks. What do you think about the whole concept of what Donald Trump said and the idea that it's locker room talk? It really like angers me as like a young woman and just the fact that he said that and then called it locker room talk, it's like he doesn't respect women in general. What worries me the most is I have young, a younger sister who's 13 years old and has access to hear those things. She doesn't have the chance yet to decide who she wants to represent her, but the person that could be elected feels that way about women. One of the things that surprised me, to be honest with you, is the number of men, colleagues, I uh, happened to be at the second debate, the number of men who came up to me and said, Chris, just so you know, men don't talk like that. In a class discussion that we had yesterday, and it was just eye-opening that to talk about men in that way and to kind of say that, oh, boys will be boys. I think it's absolutely absurd that Donald Trump can say, like, don't uh, pay attention to what I said 11 years ago, but he brings up things that, not what Hillary Clinton did 20 years ago, but what her husband did 20 years ago. Do you have a problem with the, the emails and the fact that uh, there obviously was some concern and she has had to apologize many, many times about the private server. And does that raise questions for you about openness and about honesty? We need to be able to be critical of those who we also support. And I definitely think the email situation is something that she needs to continually say, I, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, it's never going to happen again. Is there anybody here who's willing to say, look, I'm not going to defend uh, any statements by Donald Trump or any actions, but they did happen a while ago, and I just want to look at the issues. And so I would consider voting for Donald Trump. Wow. Do you, is that, do you think, because when I was at Otterbein, I would not say it was a liberal campus by any stretch of the imagination. I would say Donald Trump doesn't rep represent my Republican Party. I look for in a candidate, someone who has experience, um, skill, a plan um, and temperament, and he really has none of that. Who have we not heard from who wants to talk about sort of the mood on campus and getting people? Yes. It's really shocking and disappointing when I hear like a large amount of students saying, we're not voting. And they tell you why. Yeah, they say this election is a joke. And that's really the concern, right, for Hillary Clinton and rebuilding that Obama coalition, and that is if a lot of these millennials stay home. And talking to these students, a lot of them are active. That's why they took this kind of class. But they say they're not necessarily always having a lot of luck in pushing other 18, 19, and 20-year-olds to get out and vote. One more point. I talked to not just the Democratic Party chair, but the Republican Party chair. They both told me they still believe that this race is really, really close Hard to gauge right now the revelations over the last 24 hours or so. It's going to be fascinating, Kate, from so many angles to see how that new Ohio poll looks when Steve unveils it in the next hour.
Kate? Yeah, going to be fascinating. That was such an interesting discussion. Chris, thanks for bringing that to us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.